we are going to start with the writing down the original equation again. So, first of all we start with the prime p and we assume that p minus 1 is divisible by 4. So that means that p minus 1 can be written as 4 times k for some natural number k. Okay, so for example, if we take uh, uh, p equals 17, then p minus 1 was uh, 16 and k would be 4. And now we reformulate this equation a little bit. We add 1 to both sides and so we get the equation p, we want to have an equation for p, p is equal to 4k plus 1, that we remember has this form. And now comes something which even for me as a professional mathematician is surprising. Namely, Zagier looks at a different equation, which looks at the first glance more complicated. So, new equation, p equal x squared plus, before we looked at the equation x squared plus y squared. Now we look at the new equation for y, z. Now we have three variables, x, y and z. Before we had only two variables. So looks at the first glance more complicated. But if we think for a minute, then we see that this equation is in a certain sense much easier. Namely, it's completely trivial to write down at least one solution. This has an easy solution, namely take x equal 1, y equal k, this is this k above here, and z again equal 1. And whew, what we see, if we put it in, then p is equal to 1 squared, x equal 1, plus 4, y is k, k times z is 1. And if we compute this, then this is 1 plus 4k. Yeah, and that was our definition or our formula for p. So we have found at least one solution. That's the first important message. The question whether this equation has a solution has an easy, easy answer, whereas the question or whether the original equation has a solution is our difficult problem, p equal x squared plus y squared. Oh, there we are still a way to go. Now I uh, explain first the steps. Later we can see how much of the steps we fill with more details. Just an observation, there are only finitely many solutions of this equation p equal x squared plus 4yz with x, y and z natural numbers, in particular positive numbers. Because of if we would have infinitely many solutions, then these numbers would get arbitrary large and p is a fixed number so we get, would get on the right side numbers which are larger than p. So only finitely many solutions. The second thing is now the key thing which I will not prove now. We just stated the number of solutions is odd. It's an odd number. So it, it could be 3, 5, 7, 9, but not 2, 4, 8. The numbers are odd or the number of solutions? The number of solutions is odd. And what counts as a solution? Because there are three variables. Is a solution a set of three, is it? Yeah, oh, very good. A solution, yeah, that this will be very important in the next step, is a triple x, y, z, where the order plays a role. Yeah, I give x first, then y, and then that. that. This is a solution. So if I interchange, then it's a new solution. And this will come now. So that's very important that 
we count the solutions as ordered triples. And now there comes a little observation. If x, y, z is a solution, meaning piece x squared plus 4yz, then x, z and y is a solution because of y times z is equal to z times y. So it could be that if y is not equal to z, if we interchange, we get a second solution. And now comes the final step. This observation that if z is not equal to y, we get the involutions in pairs, namely interchanging y and z gives us a new solution, says if for all solutions y would be different from z, then we could get a second solution by interchanging y and z, and that would mean that the number of solutions is even because of their come in pairs. Yeah? For every solution with y not equal to z, we get the second solution where we interchange. So, but we know from the step two, this important step, that the number of solutions is odd. Since number of solutions is odd, there must be a solution where y is equal to z. Otherwise, we would get an even number of solutions. And now we are finished. We take this solution and put it into the equation. So let x, y, y be a solution. Then we write down the equation. P is equal to x squared plus 4y times z. Y is, z is equal to y. 4y squared. And now we do something I like very much in school. We put in bracket, this is x squared plus 2y squared. Ah, and we have written p as a sum of the x squared plus the square of 2y and hooray, we are done. I think I followed that. Thank you. <laughs> It's definitely not one sentence, though. Look, you've got that piece of paper there. And <laughs> no, it's definitely not one sentence. Why is it called the one sentence proof? Well, go to the internet and uh, type in Xavier one sentence proof, and you will find his original proof in one sentence. And an experienced mathematician can understand this one sentence proof. Only an ingenious mathematician like Don Xavier can invent such a wonderful proof, uh, but in, it, it's really a one-sentence proof for professional mathematicians, but if you spell it out, then it gets a little bit longer. We, we have this machine that can tell us whether or not any prime number can be expressed as a sum of two squares. Mm -hmm. Are there an infinite number of prime numbers that can be expressed as a sum of two squares? Yes, we, we know also that. So. Uh, we know that not only that there are infinitely many prime numbers, but we also know that with this condition p minus 1 equal divisible by 4, uh, there are also infinitely many. Well, there was one step where I felt like we took a leap of faith, and that was this, this step here and about the odd number of solutions. Like you said, there had to be an odd number of solutions, and we just then continued. That's been proven, has it? Yes, that's of course the central uh, part in the proof. And I tell you something about the idea. The idea is very similar to this uh, observation that if we interchange y and z, we get a pair of solutions. And so we have here a recipe which if we have involution x, y, z, we get a uh, uh, solution x, y, z, we get another solution. Xavier writes down another recipe, more complicated, but very explicit, which 
if you have one solution x, y, z gives you a new solution x prime, y prime and z prime. And if you apply this principle again to x prime, y prime, z prime, you get x, y, z back. So again we have paired the solutions, namely into if you have solution, you have this recipe which gives you a new solution. Only it could happen, like it happens in this other case, that the new solution is the old one. That it's not a real new solution. That can happen with this formula. And that is a very simple, if you know Sergei's formula, that's a very simple question of school mathematics type to test whether the new solution is the old one. And this school mathematics type question gives you a surprising answer. It happens only once. There is just one case, and this is always there, this one case, where the new solution is the old one. That means we always get pairs, yeah, the new solution, except in a single case where, we, where the new solution is the old one. What does it mean for the number of solutions? We have pairs, 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 even number of solutions. And finally, the single solution where the uh, pair, the, the partner, is the old solution. And that means even, even, even plus one, it's an odd number. That's the whole idea of the proof. And if you go to the internet and look at the formula, you will understand that now. What you do is very, very simple. Turn the table. You start moving the table and try to turn it so that you have a quarter of a turn. And on the way of your turning, there will be a moment where it's absolutely stable.